Hey, Karen, what time is it? How dare you speak to me that way? The time has finally come. If you've been following along so far with building your own Alexa, you know that as of now we have something that actually works, but one of the goals of this project is to actually put Karen, which is the name we gave our assistant, into his own little device, right? A lot like the Amazon Echo. But as of now, we really just have a bunch of parts that are spread out and nothing is really together. So today, we're gonna fix that using 3D printing. Okay, so honestly, that took a really long time. It took like three or four hours to put the printer together. But I think using a 3D printer is actually gonna give us a lot of flexibility when it comes to actually building the structure for our device. And as you know, this is a custom build, right? This is something we're building from the ground up. So there are no online models that we can just download to actually build this thing because all the components are, are custom. They're things we're building ourselves. So that means that we have to build our own models. Now, to be completely honest, I'm a total noob when it comes to 3D printing and 3D modeling for that matter as well. So that means that we get to learn something new and that's always fun. So after browsing online for 3D modeling software to build a structure, I came across something that caught my attention. Meet OpenSCAD. Now OpenSCAD is actually pretty unique. It's actually a program that lets you build 3D models, but it does so using code. Now, when I first thought about this, I thought, okay, well, as much as I like programming, that's probably a lot more complicated than it needs to be. From what I know about 3D modeling, I know it's a very visual process, and that's very apparent when you look at things like Blender, which is a piece of software that's used to make 3D models. However, with that said, unlike Blender, OpenSCAD is actually not meant to make artistic modeling, but rather something called a parametric model which is a way of making models using parameters. And it makes it really easy to do things like scale things up using those parameters or move things around using numbers as parameters, things like that. And when you think about it that way, programming as a way of making 3D models actually makes a lot of sense. So using the documentation for OpenSCAD, I was able to put together everything from the structure, the internal structure for Karen, to the outside shape, to the whole thing modeled using code, which is pretty cool when you think about it. The internal structure for Karen looks like this. The first base consists of the Raspberry Pi, which is the brain controlling everything and the audio card that sits on top. Something you will notice is that these bases have three things in common. The first are these four holes around the plate. The second is this larger hole, and then the final thing is this notch over here. The four holes around the plate are actually M2.5 diameter holes, which means that it's meant to fit a screw, which is actually 2.5 millimeters in diameter. And the reason for that is because it allows us to use these M2.5 standoff kit that I got from Amazon. And the larger hole is used to route wires from one layer to the next. And this notch that you see on every layer is so that the internal structure can only go into the container one way so that the power input lines up with the outside hole. Following the first base are two bases for the speakers, which hold two 79 millimeter diameter speakers. And the final layer is built for the electric components of the build. First, we have this 5.5 millimeter DC female adapter. This adapter is how we power the entire system using an old 20 volt laptop charger. Following the DC adapter, the wiring breaks into two parts. The first is this buck converter. Because the Raspberry Pi is limited to a 5.1 volt power supply, we need a way to step down the 20 volts from the laptop charger. This component allows us to do just that. Then using the wire holes, we can route the output from the Raspberry Pi using a USB-C cable that I wired directly to the output of the buck. And then the second part of the split is this digital audio amplifier. If you've seen part two of the series, you know that the amplifier of the sound card was not powerful enough to get a decent audio level from the Raspberry Pi. So actually this little board here allows us to get a much louder sound level. The wiring comes from the audio card to the amplifier and then back up to the speakers. And then to take advantage of the hardware that we salvaged from our thrift store speakers, I also created a more compact version of our system, which mounts two 40 millimeter diameter speakers onto one single base. So with all that together, we finally have our build complete. Now, if you wanna go ahead and make your own device, I'm actually gonna go ahead and end the description below, link to GitHub, which has all the SEO files and even the original source code, the open SNAP files for building the studio print yourself. And it also has all the detailed schematics. So you could actually go ahead and put all the wiring together if you wanted to do that. And if you want to see the source code for Karen itself, there'll be also a link in the description for GitHub again, which will show you the source code that powers the Karen system as well as the Karen app. So if you remember a while ago, we actually made an app for Karen and the source code for that will actually be in the description as well. If you enjoyed the video, check out some of the other builds that I have on my channel. If you like Python, maybe you want to see how I made a program that gives me 
and live in this storage. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification button so you know when I release a new video. Peace.